What's up, gang? I'm back with another video. This time we're going to take a look at something a little different. Typically, I'm covering video game related matters, virtual computers, game consoles, arcade stuff. However, this one's going to be a little bit different. You may notice on my desk, my iMac's missing. Setting its place is an Asus 2560 by 1440 monitor, and it's connected to da -da -da -da, a Mac Pro. Uh, I recently picked this guy up from Mac of all trades on the internet. They're a reseller of used Mac goods uh, out of Florida. They sell tons and tons of used Macs. Uh, this is a dual processor machine. Uh, two processors, four cores each, so a total of eight cores, running at 2.26 gigahertz. However, um, I'm going to upgrade this machine. I've actually picked up a pair of six core processors that runs at 3.33 gigahertz each. We're going to go ahead and pop this up on desk, open it up, and I'm going to install these. We're going to take a look and see how it runs afterwards. If you're wondering about the reason I purchased this, well, it's mostly because of video in support of the channel. I'm running Final Cut Pro 10 on my iMac for the last five or six videos. I, I purchased a license for it probably a month or so ago. In the last several videos, I've been editing in it, uh, slowly learning my way. Previously to that, I was using iMovie because, you know, hell, it comes free with the iMac. So I decided to go ahead and pony up the extra cash and bought Final Cut. Um, however, what I was running into was simply the iMac was running out of steam when I was editing. I mean, it was working. However, it was taking a long time to render and it was taking a long time to export the files out, at least longer than I wanted. So I decided to pick up Mac Pro. I'm going to go ahead and outfit this with some extra hardware, including an ATI Radeon R9 280X. However, that one won't be in this video simply because I haven't received it yet. But um, let's go ahead and put this up on a bench, and let's open it up and take a peek inside. Okay, I've got my Mac Pro sitting up on top of the desk. And then we'll go ahead and open this up if you're not familiar with how these work. On the back, there's a latch. Put your finger under, you lift up, the side door comes right off. Okay, starting from the top, up here we have the power supply. Over here we have the dual optical bay. And actually, if you want to upgrade this, you simply put your hands in there and pull out on this guy. And then you have access to the optical drives. You can replace them and just slide back in there. It's a really clever system. Down here we have a hard drive base. Uh, there's four um, sleds. You just put your fingers in there, pull them out, and you have your discs. Um, this machine here has a single terabyte hard drive in the first bay, and then some additional storage, which I'll get into that in a second. Okay, I brought the camera down for a little closer look to the inside components. Uh, the top card up here is a Rocket, High Point Rocket U1144C. It's a USB 3 controller. It's really nice because it has four ports on the back of the machine, and each one's a dedicated bus. So each one can have full bandwidth going to it. So it's not one of those things where all the USB 3 ports share the same bandwidth. Below it is an Apricorn um, Velocity Solo X2. Basically, it's a PCI Express to SATA 3 controller and it has mounted on a little black guy. That's actually a Samsung 850 Evo solid state drive. It's a 500 gig solid state drive. Below it is a video card. In this case, this one's an NVIDIA GT120. To be honest, it's a piece of crap. It's being replaced with the R9 280X when I receive it. I should receive that in a few days. And that'll make a big difference to how the machine renders video. And then down below here, is the processor tray. Let me go ahead and show you just how easy this is to remove. If you want to remove the processor and RAM tray, you put your fingers in these little spots here, you push them in, and you pull it out. It's that easy. Now you have full access to, in this case, all eight RAM slots and both CPUs. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Mac back on the floor and we're gonna concentrate on this guy here. All right, right here we have just the tray by itself. As you can see, we have a total of right now two gate or well, two RAM sticks one up here, one up here, um, and one here, one up here. Both these are eight gig sticks, and I've actually picked up four more sticks. Uh, currently, the machine has 16 gigs of RAM. When I'm done with it, I have 48 gigabytes of RAM. But before we get to that, Let's see some other stuff here we'll put in there. 
Um, here's the two other 16 gig kits. Um, both of these are Corsair, or I'm sorry, Crucial Ballistics kits. They are DDR3 1600 megahertz kits. Uh, when I'm done, the machine will um, run 1333 megahertz RAM, but um, this was pretty much as cheap as I could get at the time. These are non-ECC. Apple recommends ECC because of the Xeon processor, but you don't have to use ECC. You can get away without running ECC. It's not a big deal. And here's a box which contains our processor upgrade. This came from DN Computers out of Iowa. There's a the box. And we have instructions. This is for the firmware update. Uh, that's one of the things you have to do with this machine. You have to update the firmware before they do the installation. And actually, I've kind of skipped that. Um, before we go any further with this, I'm going to actually put the processor tray back in the machine, boot it back up, update the firmware. But I'll show you that in a second. Here's a thumb drive DN computer supplies. I'm not sure how large a thumb drive it is. That doesn't really matter. It's just going to be used for the firmware update. A chem pad. You use this to clean off the heat sink paste that's currently on the existing heat sinks. This is, I believe, a 3 millimeter uh, hex head Torx or hex head wrench. This is so you can remove the processors. Um, the heat sinks, you have to put it out through the top and unscrew them. And as you can see, this thing's extremely long because they're extremely long uh, holes down through the heat sinks. A tube of Arctic Silver 5. Always good. And the CPUs. These are both 6 core, 3.33 gigahertz. These should be Intel X, uh, the heat spray has been removed. Uh, these are both um, X5680s. And they look a little different than you would normally find. Like if you eBayed or Google searched for these, you would see they look a little different. They would actually have the integrated heat spray on top, the little metal plate. Like, if you know most modern processors have a large integrated metal plate on top of them, which is designed to help spread out the load of the heat sink and spread the heat thermally. Uh, and then it basically it meets up with the core, which this is the actual, these are the actual cores. However, the 2009 model Mac Pro requires, if you have a dual processor one, it requires the integrated heat spreaders being removed. This can be difficult for some people. Uh, basically, you have to either cut them off with a razor or use something like a vise to actually break them loose off there and then remove them and it's it's something you could you can easily screw a processor up uh, whilst these processors were kind of expensive getting from DN computers compared to what you'd pay for just a processor on eBay if you consider the fact that you could easily damage one of these and totally ruin them it's not a bad bargain uh, the whole kit uh, this whole kit here which was both processors the thumb drive uh, the paste the chem pad and the wrench was $415 and then there was shipping. Um, if you bought the processors alone, you'd be looking at $130 to $145 each, and they'd still have the integrated heat spreaders on them. So you pay about, for the whole kit, you pay maybe a $100 premium once you buy the processor and you buy all the stuff separate. But, you know, it's nice because they're already tested and working. So what we'll do is hook the Mac Pro back up real quick, run this update and I'll meet you back here. All right guys, I'm back to the desktop. I went ahead and decided to film this, the actual firmware updating. So I've got here in my hand, the thumb drive. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Mac. All right, we've got the little icon on our desktop here. 
Go ahead and double click that guy. Now, looking at the instruction here, because he provided these nice little instructions, you have to make sure you have an internet connection. Because I believe what this does actually goes out and pulls down some files to run this firmware update. So, I'm going to go ahead and press the upgrade to 2010 firmware. Put in my password. It creates a RAM disk, which I'm guessing is what it's going to boot off of. So I'm guessing the machine, it reboots and then um, I suppose it boots off of files that are in that RAM disk. All right, now it tells us to complete the firmware update, shut down the system, and upon restarting, hold the power button down until the power indicator flashes or you hear a long tone and then release the power button. A gray screen with an Apple logo and progress bar appear while the update is taking place. When the update is complete, your Mac Pro will start normally. The update may take a few minutes. Don't unplug, shut down, and restart, or disturb your Mac Pro in any way while the update is taking place. Okay, sounds pretty straightforward. I'm going to hold the power button in just a second. Okay, it's flashing. I'll let go of it. There was our crazy tones. The machine's rebooting again. And we're back at the gray screen. And we've got the little progress bar here. I'll probably just speed through this part. There's no reason for you guys to sit through watching this thing do the firmware flashing. Okay, looks like it's done with the firmware update now. I think the Mac Pro is going to reboot. And if all goes well, we'll be back at the login prompt. All right, let's see it's booting back up. Okay guys, we're booted back up, we're logged back in. I'll show you how to go and check to make sure the firmware did in fact run. In this case, my machine still identifies in early 2009. However, if we go into system report, right here's what we want. Mac Pro 5 comma 1. Um, originally it was listed as a comma, a 4 comma 1. Uh, a 4 1 is what the 2009 machine is identified as. And a 2010 and 2012 model are identified as a 5 comma 1. This firmware update basically makes this machine a 2010-2012 model. Without running this update, we A, can't upgrade the CPUs to the newer CPUs that we want to run, and B, we can't run the memory at a faster speed. Uh, right now, the memory is running at 1066 because that's the bus speed of these processors. But once we upgrade to the new processors, we can run the RAM at 1333 megahertz. So, Let's see everything's good here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her back down. We'll pull the tray out. We'll do an upgrade. Okay, we've got the tray pulled back out. Now it's time to do some surgery here. Let me go ahead and get what we need here. Our chem pad, CPUs, a long unkey and Arctic Silver. First things first, I'm going to remove the existing RAM so we don't damage those or get the, have those in our way. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, these two heat sinks are different. Um, they might look the same, but in fact they have to go back in the same spot, so don't try to get them interchanged around. Look at 
Okay, let's go ahead and pull the first processor out. Okay. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, there's the first core. You can see how that one's a deleted CPU. It's got a little plastic spacer around it. Go ahead and take the CPU out. This is a E5520, the original four core processor, one of them. Uh, it's four cores running at 2.26 gigahertz. Uh, looks like we got one still stuck here. And lift straight up. Oh, CPU on this one's still stuck, so we'll just loosen it up a little bit. There we go. It's a little black frame. And here is the other E5520. Got our new processors here. And we want to make sure you match up the notches with the notches that are on the board. Okay. And we'll put our little plastic spacer back in there. Make sure that lines up. And we'll do the same with the other slot. Okay, those look pretty good. Now we, I'm gonna put this aside here. What we wanna do is clean off both of the heat sinks on these, the compound on the bottom. Hence what the chem pad's for. One last little cleaning. We should be good to go. And actually, I think I'm going to give a brief cleaning to the tops of each CPU, just in case. Okay, we've got both CPUs cleaned up. We've got both heat sinks cleaned up. All left now to do is apply our Arctic Silver. Uh, there's a couple different schools of thought on how to apply this. Uh, some will put a blob in there, then use a credit card to spread it around. Others will put a little rice size piece in there. Others will do a line, to be honest. I really don't think it matters too heavily much. Maybe on some high-end overclocked machines where they're trying to squeeze every last little degree out of it, but for the most part, I think they're pretty similar. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the line method, which is recommended usually for a CPU that doesn't have a heat spreader. Uh, so what we're gonna do is do a little one millimeter thick line down the center of each CPU. Something like that. Now time to reapply the heat sinks. These are kind of interesting, uh, the design, because they have built-in cooling fans in them. And also the fan, uh, the power um, connector is integrated into it. So when you, when you mate this thing down, it actually plugs in the fan too. It's a pretty clever system. All right, let's go ahead and put this back on here. Plug it straight down. There we go. And I'm gonna tighten the, the heat sink screws in kind of a star type pattern so it doesn't get all pressure on one side. Start back here. That feels pretty good. 
Let's take a look at it from the side here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and do this one the same. Trying to make sure these are all tightened up pretty similar. You don't want to really torque them down. You want to tighten them to the point where you start feeling some heavy resistance. And let me double check it here. Check this side. I think this one over here could use a little bit more tightening. All right, let's go ahead and put our memory back in here. Okay, here's our last memory stick. Okay, upgraded processors and 48 gigabytes of RAM. Well, let's go ahead and pop this back in a Mac, cross our fingers and hope to hell it boots. And we'll hit the power button in three, two, one. Fans are spinning up, so that's a good thing. I hear it accessing the CD-ROM drive. And there's our bong, hot damn. Woo, yeah. This should take just a few seconds. There we go. I'm at the login. The memory modules are installed in the recommended slots. Another cool thing about the Mac, it'll t bitch at you if you got them in the wrong spots. And it'll tell you if you got them in the right one. Okay, we're going to get about this Mac. Let's see what it comes up with. Hot damn, look at that. A pair of 3.33 gigahertz 6 core Intel Xeons, 48 gigabytes of 1333 megahertz DDR3. Damn, that's sweet, look at that. And I've still got two slots left, so if I want to, I can go up to 64 gigs. However, since this is a triple channel memory system, uh, you actually take a little bit of a speed, uh, a little bit of speed penalty by going to four sticks of RAM in use in either CPU slot. Um, so it's one of those things where you get to weigh, do you need more RAM or do you benefit from a little bit faster uh, running speed, uh, system speed? In my case, I think 48 gigs is overkill, so there's, I have no reason to go up to 64 gigs. And actually, this machine can go up to, I believe, 128 gigs with 16 gig DIMMs each spot. However, that's a crazy expensive. Nice. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at a few benchmarks. We'll start with Geekbench. This is a favorite amongst Mac users. We'll run the Intel 64-bit version. I, I ran this earlier, so I've got a copy of, uh, on a desktop, a screenshot of what the hardware was like before with the original processors. We'll compare it to the new upgraded processors and faster RAM and see what it looks like. Mmm, that's not good. 